Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for your listening pleasure, episode number I don't know. I know I have it wrong up there at the top of the screen, I'll try to fix that here momentarily. It's got the last broadcast episode up there, <laughs> I didn't fix that. Um, tonight we're going to be uh, pre-recording an episode because uh, some work issues that I've got going on, I'm going to be working some overtime and uh, uh, some missing some Saturdays, so uh we want to have some episodes in the can, and hopefully you guys will enjoy the ones that we've got pre-recorded. Um, and this is one such episode. Uh, with me tonight is Christian Russell. Hello. Jack Brunner. Hi. And Robert Simmons. Yo. <laughs> um, tonight we're going to be talking about something that actually we haven't had a specific episode on uh, uh, I got to looking back in the archives. The last time we had a favorites-centered uh, episode was way back on TFYLP episode number 83, uh, where we talked about our favorite uh, episodes, and we had like an entirely different cast then. Um, and it's kind of be kind of interesting to for myself to go back and listen to that episode and then compare it to this one uh, and see how my tastes have changed in the four years or so uh, since that episode aired. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what you guys, uh, your top picks are. Uh, we're just going to be covering uh, the top five official toys. Uh, going to try to not not do third party in this, in this particular episode. Yeah, you should have said that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't have official figures that you don't like. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I went and got mine off the shelf and uh, there's a mix. Well, that's fine. But uh, generally, it's going to be official toys. I know all mine are, are, uh, here are official. Although I do have some unofficial ones that would probably supersede some of these. Uh, my particular uh, likes aren't in any particular order. Because it's very diff uh, difficult for me to sit here and say, oh, this is my absolute number one favorite toy. Uh, there's so many toys that I, I just love that, that are my favorites. Uh, so whenever I present my uh, top five, it's not in any particular order. Um, you know, I'm glad you said that, Duran, because you know I was kind of going to say the same thing. There's a there's a lot of toys that I love for a lot of reasons, um, you know, and there's a lot of nuance in it, you know, and you got to take into consideration when they were made. You know, like mm. you can't judge a G1 toy by modern day standards, for no. example. It, you know, like everything that comes up today objectively beats the crap out of anything that came out 30 years ago. Um, but that doesn't mean we still don't love those toys. So absolutely. Yeah. I, I definitely don't believe in a favorite toy or even like top X. I just, I got out some toys that I really like and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get about five of them and we'll go from there. Yeah. That's the, I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, tonight. Um, simply for the reason that it's, it's so hard just so hard to, to hammer it down. And I mean, I'm sure if I had several weeks to sit and, and, and narrow it down and, and, and scrutinize each and every little aspect, you know, it's like, well, this is an original toy. This is an updated toy. You know, this came out then, this came out then, this is funner than this toy. You know, it would take forever just, just to, eliminate it down and say this is def definitively my favorite toy uh i do have some favorite characters and and everything it and it kind of co coincides but not exclusively uh before we uh go on do you guys have any uh recent pickups that you kind of want to gush about or anything in an ouch my wallet okay robert has one uno momento por favor I wonder if it's the same one I have. And Maybe. Right and he has quickly grabbed it. His toy. Oh, yeah, I just got in New Evolution Megatron from Wei New Wei Evolution. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, this, you know, Wei Zhang, mainly known for starting out doing knockoffs. So, you know, I stayed away from the company. But this is an all-new mold. It obviously follow, borrows some ideas for, like, the interchangeable chest plate in the face of the masterpiece Megatron toy, but I um, mean, you know, crotch kind of looks like a Polyon a bit, but mm -hmm. it's completely unique engineering, um, you know, to the point as far as, you know, how some transformers 
copy things, but you know, it cleans up really nice on the back too. Not that I display my figures from the back, but a lot of the Megatrons out there have been pretty messy. Um, yeah, and I was clean up nice. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna do a full review of this guy on, on my uh, Berman's videos channel. Uh, hopefully in a week or two. I've had to had to take a break for a week or two while I was recovering from something, but I'm feeling better now. So just got to find some time now to to review this guy. So I've got him, and uh, I also just got in this yesterday. Oh, did, you got the Weijing, uh, uh Omega? No, no, I just got Doc. Oh, <laughs> how did you manage that? <laughs> uh, I've been following the Weijing Ultima Guard thread, and yeah. anytime anybody posts in there about, you know, I'm getting rid of my Doc, or is anybody interested in a Doc, I've contacted them and finally was able to find somebody to sell me one at the price I wanted. Nice. Um, and so, yeah, so I got him in, and I'll be reviewing him, too. It'll be a quick review. But he's cool. He's fun. He's fun. He's a he at least bit more articulation, he's a, but he's cool to have. He's at least a little posable. Oh, yeah. He's got joints all over the place. Hmm. He's missing some swivels, though. That's hmm. the real big problem. But, yeah, he's cool. He's kind of like a stick fuzz, what he looked like to me. You remember those? Yeah. Oh, vaguely. But uh, this guy and stick definitely go together. Yeah. What about you, Jack? Well, for the past, like, month or two, I've been actually on a movie kick. Um, I was actually poking through Craigslist just for shits and giggles, and uh, I'm sorry for the swear, but... Yeah, um, so I found this lot um, that this one guy was selling. It was, like, 20 figures for 30 bucks, and one of them just happened to catch my eye really, like, the most, and it was Revenge of the Fallen Leader Optimus Prime in pristine condition. In, in um, a lot? In a lot with 20 other figures. Wow. That's, like, that's like one of the best movie figures ever made. Yeah. I mean, everything's here. The only problem I have with him is his little wheel well on his back uh, doesn't really like to peg in because uh, the hole that it has, uh, is, I think, was drilled a little too small. Um, but, yeah, that's mm. pretty much the only problem I have with him. Otherwise, everything is here. Um, got every piece that usually tends to pop off like his feet or like the little chest things and his electronics still work i think i got it nice so, yeah, i was like that's a great pickup yes and it is i think the rest of the figures there was a Revenge of the fallen voyager class the fallen um voyager megatron deluxe swindle from the first movie um, a Ravage, Scorpionok, Revenge of the Fallen, Demolishor, first movie Voyager, Megatron, um, I think, I'm pretty sure it was the first movie Desert Brawl. Um, was, was this on eBay or on the boards or? On uh, Craigslist. Craigslist. Oh, wow. He just wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, 30 bucks, I'm like, yes. I mean, for this alone, that's in this condition, I think that's pretty much like 40 or 50 loose. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty much that. Um, and obviously with the studio series finally popping up, I've managed to get a few. This is pretty much my favorite of the line so far from what I have. Um, I've seen that one in store, but I haven't picked it up yet. He is so fun. I mean, obviously he's just the Dark of the Moon deluxe, but loaded up avoid bumblebee at all costs there is a second run like i God. said last on the last pre-record and i'm just waiting to find that i haven't found it yet so i'm gonna just wait and see but yeah, yeah. starscream i feel is the hidden gem so far um then i this is the one i got second the most recent optimus actually not bad um they actually did do a second run of this guy um there wasn't really much for QC, but it was more, I think, just for the hell of it, because there's a lot more metallic red paint on them than what there was on the first. And his swords are actually a little more translucent than the original was, which I actually like this a lot more. Obviously, with the paint, it made it a lot better. Did they change out the face, too? I thought there was a mask versus mouth variant. I have not heard about that yet. I don't <clears throat> think there was. Then uh, just the other day, I managed to get back Stinger because I actually did have him before, but I had to send him back like three hours later because 
he was just loose and had a piece broken. And I was like, okay, might as well take a Mac. So I managed to get him in the, the other day, and this guy's so fun. I'm like, I this is the Age of Extinction Stinger I've been waiting for for four years. So that's pretty much the main stuff I got. Sweet. What about you, Crap Christian? kind of movie. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I've gotten recently, well, I got two things. I got one today, one yesterday. I went and picked up uh, the Ross Hot Rod today, right before the show. The Ross Hot Rod. Oh, uh, the oh, the yeah, uh, the Walmart one. Yeah, yeah, the Walmart Deluxe guy that never showed up at actual Walmart's. No, he never yeah. showed up. I, I bought the Japanese one for like forty bucks and returned it because I didn't want to pay that price for it. But I paid nine bucks for this one, and I'm much more comfortable with that. Nice. And then yesterday, I went and grabbed only... my Ollie's Trypticon. Oh, yeah, those are popping up for 50 bucks and everything. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but Facebook the last day or two has been rife with people uh, posting like a back seat full of Trypticons thinking they're going to make bank on these things. It's like, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Everybody's doing it. You'd be lucky if you make five bucks on each, you know, really, seriously. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I bought a couple extras last year when they did Fort Max. I was going to customize them and then I unloaded them much, much later. And they are they were so expensive to ship, it just killed anything I was going to make on them. Well, I think a lot of people's plans on taking them to cons and stuff. And I'd... Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Oh, yeah. With that. Dealer booths aren't cheap. No. Yep. I got this one to in hopes that someone will make a Gigastorm kit. If not, I may venture into trying to do it myself. I would. The only reason I would want one is just to have one to keep sealed for posterity's uh, posterity's sake. I've got one loose. I've had one since like it got released. Mm -hmm. Um. So you know, I'm I'm not exactly chomping at the bit to get one, but I am you know. really hoping for one because. Uh... It's to go with my Chug collection, and I just need Metroplex and Trypticon, and that's pretty much about to level off the whole Chug. Yeah, I've, and I've it's got LG. Is just getting I've got LG Metroplex this. setting setting into my pile at uh, at Capture Prey. And, uh, I actually what? found a huh Metro in your what at Capture Prey? Oh, I'm sorry, at my, in my captive uh, stock uh, whatever it is. Oh my god, dude! dude. <laughs> it's called the Stasis on. Pod. The Stasis on. Pod. I don't use it. I mean, I just order it and he puts it aside. <laughs> but something I'm else with you, Chris. <laughs> I suck. Stasis Pod. Dude. I suck at names. Okay, okay, Chip. <laughs> okay, Don. <laughs> But no, ser uh, seriously though, I, I do have uh, um, Racket, the Zeta Toys Racket, the, which is um, Swindle. Uh, it's on the way, hasn't got here yet. Um, so hopefully it'll get here by Saturday, knock on wood. Uh, looking forward to that. Still waiting on Uproar, you know, which is the brawl. And then Zeta, just this morning, actually posted pictures of their Onslaught, which looks flipping amazing too so that okay. bruticus is very very near being complete they're they're shooting for a late june early july i believe uh release of that so um yeah giant bruticus in uh, in inbound people yay absolutely all right let's uh let's move on to our uh, top five favorites and since he's got some that aren't official we'll get i guess we'll start with rob first uh, my official ones aren't at the beginning here um or my unofficial ones are what i'm going to start with is totally cheating because it's going to be a twofer because there's not a lot to say um but from g1 bumblebee and brownie uh you know bumblebee because, <laughs> that's eclectic <laughs> yeah but i mean who, who didn't play with bumblebee as a kid you know who did not have oh, shut up that's because <laughs> That you had to actually be a kid at the time. I mean, look, I just transformed it in like two seconds. You know, it's and Jack it's wasn't all about even a glimmer in his parents' about. eye at the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it takes two seconds to transform. He's cute. Bumblebee was the kid appeal character. You know, uh, well, I guess it, he is again. You know, um, but you know, just when I think Transformers, I think uh, G1 Bumblebee, the little penny racer, comes to mind. And then as well as just G1 Transformers that I absolutely love is is definitely browning um you know there's that knockoff that uh i highly recommend just because this guy's obviously very cost prohibitive 
Um, I actually don't transform this guy because I'm too worried about breaking these blue leg panels. I've, I did it on a Diaclone version I had at one time. Mm. Um, but he's just a tough-looking little robot. Uh, he's shiny and metal. His proportions are good. He's uh, easy to flip back and forth, um, and he transforms into a little handgun, shoots pellets, which is fun. Just don't go um, waving, me, uh, waving him around out yeah. on your front por- front porch. No, no. <laughs> Do not take him into a theater and start shouting. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's a, that's a, that's a starting off my list there. All right. What's, uh, what's next? I guess we'll just go to each person and, and, uh, since there's no particular order, um, I guess Christian will go to you next. All right. Uh, this is going to be my so-called number one because I think it's basically the perfect Transformer toy. Prime first edition Optimus. Oh, I... Mm. I never got that toy. Well, I have every version of the mold ever made because I love it so much. And I like him because he's got a fun transformation scheme. He looks like the animation model. Uh, the colors are good. The accessories were good. He came out in the limited release, which was bad. But if you're able to get him, I highly recommend him. Or the and, Dark Guard one, or the Clear one, or the Takara one. And the one. first edition one, he has. Ri- he doesn't have fake chest boobs, right? Do they actually become chest his boobs. windows in? No, uh, they're the full chest. Ones? No, no. Okay, that's fake. the fake one. Is it the later, the later release then that doesn't yeah, have the, the fake? Yeah, uh, R.A.D. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure, like the Studio Series Optimus, I'm pretty sure shared a lot of. Uh, like with the arms, how they fold up, I'm pretty sure they share that with uh, uh, the first edition. I'm pretty sure that's where they got that pretty much transformation scheme. So, but yeah, that was a good line overall. Yeah, there, there was, was some, there were some good toys in Prime. I have to admit that. So this was actually the second edition with the missing paint on the brown parts of the windows, and if you can see, he's got a, a misapplied Autobot symbol here. Oh, but, it looks like he's missing the little, two little lines. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's overlapped. It's it's like they put a stencil on and then moved the stencil and then painted again. Oh, uh, that sounds uh, a, a lot like the um, the masterpiece uh, uh, Thundercracker that I had. The... Yeah. But if you want to look closer, I have the Doctor Wu head on it. I've done some silver paintwork on it, on the wheels too, just to kind of make him better. Plus, you know, Skybreaker sword. I don't know. A common theme that you'll see with all the ones that I'm going to show is that I've put extra work into the ones that I like a lot. But is he better than this Prime? Yes. Far. <laughs> Far better. I held, so held up the uh, the Cyber Battalion Prime. No, he is not on my list. Hey, I it's saw a favorites that list. At... Not least favorites list. <laughs> I saw the Cyber Battalion the other day at Family Dollar. <laughs> the I'm only like, reason I picked this up is, uh, is just to have a, a desk bot to mess with i mean if he breaks whatever you know but um yeah jack what about your uh your first one well i might as well get it out of the way because i didn't want to grab it out and knock everything over so i have to say combiner wars devastator um yeah that should pretty much say good um, choice i always wanted wanted a good devastator and i did get it was like I'm not sure if it was Universe or Classic. It was, it was like the rerun of the Energon Constructicon Maximus, mm-hmm. but it was the more devastated colors. And I had that for the longest time, and all of a sudden I lost like every piece to it. And I, I think the only piece I have now is just though it's torso. Um, so I was like, I'm hoping to get a good Devastator. Obviously, G1 is going to be a pain in the butt because of all the pieces just to find. So luckily, when they announced the Combiner Wars, I'm like, I'm going to get that. Then uh, I kind of ended up saw a couple of the reviews that looked okay. Then the uh, perfect effect upgrades were uh, announced. I'm like, yeah, that's going to make it a lot better. So I got the ones, like the elbows and the guns. Then I got the other one for the combiner itself. And it also comes with the prowl head, which is yeah, I've got, not a huge I've got fan, the prowl but... stator head, but I never used it. It's still in the box. I'm like, that's so dumb. (laughs) But that actually looks pretty badass. Yeah, that was pretty much my first pick. I just, like I said, I didn't want to get them out and make everybody else fall over. Did you ever think about getting getting the uh, 
Unite Warriors version? I am not. It wasn't okay, really I, thinking about it. Say, I don't know how Unite Warriors compares with the upgrade kit you mentioned, but you know the Unite Warriors version gives it the gives them all guns, gives them a lot of mail bows and you know, yeah. things of that nature. Yeah, I mean they the perfect effect I know just gives every team member just like a regular gun, um, and whoever needs elbows, um, they pretty much make. The uh, new elbows. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll tag it. So that was pretty much my first pick. Sweet. All right. Well, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I don't have. Well, I do have uh, have one ha handy, but I'm gonna just uh, show pictures of mine um, to the viewers. Uh, my my first one is a no brainer, and uh, the viewers that are watching right now are seeing uh, Generation One Weird Wolf. Uh, that is like one of my, f yeah, yeah. Imagine that. Imagine. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been one of my favorites since, since way back when, uh, you know, there's, there's so many G1 toys that, that can fall into my favorites category. Uh, but whenever I think back, uh, weird wolf is the one that always stood out to me, uh, as a kid, um, he, uh, when, whenever I got back online years and years ago, uh, and I was trying to think of a screen name to use and I thought back, well, what was my favorite G1 transformer to, uh, to play with? And the first one that came to my mind was weird wolf. Um, he's not, you know, like, like Rob said at the top of the show, you know, m most G1s won't fall into any. Uh, category as you know a superior toy especially when you compare them to modern toys uh however uh you know from a g1 standpoint he was quick to transform and just all around fun to play with you know he, he was super simple uh had those weird wacky colors i mean a yellow and turquoise wolf you know, it's like, it's like whoever thought of, thought of those colors was like either high or a genius. I, I can't figure out. Maybe a little well, both. both. Yeah. Um, but I, I just love G1 Weird Wolf. Um, it was always a fun toy for me to play with. And I had identified with the uh, uh, the character's bio on the on the tech spec. You know, uh, he was like one. He was like super smart. But the way he spoke, nobody could understand him because he kind of spoke to himself in a sing-song backward way but yet he was very good at what he did and his uh, uh headmaster partner was an ex-hyper wrestler so you know i'm like I, I can dig this guy because i love wrestling you know a lot of people don't get along or you know don't get me because I, I I know what I'm talking about, but I don't convey what I'm trying to say in a in a very very good manner sometimes. And sometimes people just look at me like you're just weird. You know, your guys are like, no, no, no weird yeah. like a wolf. Yes. Yeah, don't be surprised. And sometimes I'm hungry that. like one too. Don't be surprised if his favorite figures number two and three is going to be Fans Project Quadruple U and Titan nope. Return. No, there's no unofficial toys on my on my list right now. Uh, well, in this particular one. So I guess that brings us back around to Rob. You know, since you just said Weird Wolf and Hell Jack just said Fans Project Quadruple U, I had Code. that Fans Project Not Chrome Dome on my list. Um, you know, which is, you know, in that same line as the Quadruple U. And so why did I pick this? Um I really love the transformation on this guy. Purely what it is. Like, I think the aesthetic, aesthetics leave something to, to define. But when I picked this guy up, it was hard to put down for a long time. His, he's so unique where, you know, you spin him around and you got to, like, slide that piece out. That was a makes a lot of, that was just flipping amazing. The, the, exactly. The hood the slide. Engineering, the engineering on this guy is unique. You know, you don't, you don't transform anything about this guy that's routine. And, you know, and honestly, I think it goes for the first several releases in this line, including the, they're not weird wolf, um, figure, you know, that's, I really like that one too. I didn't know which one to pick. And I went with this one cause it was first is honestly the truth. Um, yeah, just, if you like a fun toy that doesn't transform the same way every other toy does, I think 
this guy in, in the first several in this line really nailed that. I, I really wish they had continued that line, though. They only did the... What, sales, Chrome, I think, really dropped yeah, off. Yeah, Chrome Dome, they did Weird Wolf, and I think they did Highbrow. No, and, I think it was Mind Wipe. And Mind Wipe, yeah. They, and, uh, no, they, did, they did Highbrow, Skull Cruncher, Brainstorm, and... Uh, oh, that's right. They did... Okay, uh, Brainstorm and uh, Smart switch. Robin. Yeah, but they didn't do... Uh, hardhead, did they? No, they did not do a hardhead. Hmm. That's a shame. Oh, that's a shame. Yep. Yep. What about you, Christian? Well, since we're saying combiners count, <laughs> I, I had a, I had an alternate just in case combiners didn't count. Um, my next favorite is Combiner Wars Computron. Oh. Still got to get him. Go get him now. He's so fun. I only have a Scourge. A scrounge? Scrounge, sorry. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, you don't even know. Why do you even I do on know? The show? He only has <laughs> one weapon, and, and, and you make it. fun of uh, me messing up the captured prey uh, stasis <laughs> pod. You don't even know a character's name. Shame. I did. I do know his name. I just didn't word it properly with my face. Kind of like what Sorry, I was talking about. Him. You weirdo. <laughs> All right, so I definitely like this one more than Unite Warriors, and I think it's because I prefer kind of updated characters rather than slavish representations of what is old. That may change when I, I, I had to rebuy Unite Warriors Computron because of the new kit that's coming out from Transform Dreamwave. But this one's still really awesome. He's got upgrade kits, which, again, is a theme. He's got Reaper labels. Uh, the colors really work for me. They're kind of garish, but uh, I've always related to Computron because he was the smart combiner. Yeah, he wasn't the strongest, he wasn't the fastest, but he was he was the smart one, and I like that. I always liked him uh, for those reasons, too. But I actually prefer, even though I have not picked up the Unite Warriors one for my own, I mean, I've got it in my Stasis pod, uh, but I have not picked it up yet. Um, although I have messed with other people's Unite Warriors version of it. I've got the, uh, the Combiner Wars version, and I, I have to say... That's one of the few times that I actually prefer the Combiner Wars version over the Unite Warriors. Uh, you know, I like the Brawl mold for Nose Cone over mm -hmm. the Rook mold. Uh, it works better for me. Uh, I think the, uh, what is it, the Dead End version of uh, the mold for Lightspeed. Uh, for Lightspeed works better than the Wheeljack mold. Uh, it just, it all, all around works better for me. I think the only thing that really... Uh, uh, Combiner War, I'm sorry, Unite Warriors nailed was, I think, like a better scatter shot. I think their scatter shot. Yeah, it was, was like a the chest in combined mode that they pretty much nailed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if you put an upgrade part on it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what I did. I got the uh, the perfect effect upgrade sets and and called yeah. it a day. For, for a time, I had both and I mixed the sets. <clears throat> so I liked uh, Unite Warriors Light Speed, Unite Warriors Strafe a bit better. But mixing them, it's just not the same. The colors that they used aren't in the same family. They, they really don't mix. Hmm. At least I don't think so. Which is weird because it's the same character. <laughs> right. You think it would be you know, similar, but it's just not. the. I think it comes down to like the base colors, which is that, that kind of techno body maroon color plus the white color they use. Uh, between the two the sets, tones. it's not the same. Yeah. It's all the earth tones. I think that really work really well. I, I really like that their color layout. Yeah, and Unite Warriors is is more contrasting. It's a brighter, brighter white, brighter red. Yeah, so Combiner Wars kind of be drawn. Plus, we finally got a toy scrounge. <laughs> yeah, how awesome is that? Yeah, it's very awesome. All right, Jack. Well, he was in the recent pickup, so I'm going to bring him out again. <laughs> Under the Fallen Prime. <laughs> um, pretty much like Devastator, where I was waiting for a good, um representation of them and i do have the first movie leader optimus and i didn't feel that didn't really catch pretty much the image of movie prime so i'm just i waited obviously like the year and a half then they announced the revenge of the fallen leader i'm like yes i think i had the chance to get them and i don't know why but i just passed um so obviously now waiting for I think six, seven years. Um, I got the movie Ultimate Edition um, 
Asia Premium Series um, Optimus, and that thing pretty much nailed it for me as the best movie Optimus ever, along with this guy. I'm like, this pretty much captures what I feel is a good movie Optimus um, figure. So I was like, eh, that was worth the wait. That was worth the seven-year wait. Pretty much the same as my uh, Fans Project Diaclone trailer. So, yeah, that was pretty much mine. Random Fallen. Yeah, like, I I don't care for the movies. I mean, I still bought a lot of the toys because I, I like toys. And that is still a very cool toy. I I don't have anything from the movie in my collection just because I... I mean, uh, on my list today, but that is definitely one of my favorite movie toys. Yeah, it I, it, it really nailed it. Uh, ironically, I was uh, I watched uh, the last night, or I watched about an hour and a half of the last night this morning, uh, whenever I got up, and Why? I yeah, I I couldn't I couldn't finish it. It is so horrible. I'm sitting here and I'm I'm sitting there and I'm I was watching it, and uh. I messaged uh, uh, Orson and a couple uh, people. And I'm like, I'm watching the last night right now, and to me, it, fe- it feels like a bunch of random movie clips that somebody spliced together into one long movie that makes absolutely no sense. Fun I mean, fact, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like you know, if you just watch the movie, it's like it goes from plot to, or point to point to point to point. And doesn't have anything like that that sinews it together, you know, like like ties it together. Explosions sinew it together. Yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. That's what happened. They had that cool writers' room thing, and then they had like twenty scripts that they could have made. And De Bonaventura and Bay decided that they would take the three that they liked and put them into one movie. That's not how. That's not how that works. Luckily for us, they're going to reboot the whole thing. I mean, it, it was just a train. It was just an utter train wreck, and uh, yeah. I mean, there there if were moments. Movie, if you went in that movie expecting anything else, no. I mean, did you have you not learned anything? Obviously, no matter what movie comes out, I always have my expectations low. I mean, well, I mean even it, if it's like the greatest movie ever, it has so, its moments. Like, you know, I mean, there there were like little scenes that's like made me chuckle. Uh, you know, like whenever uh, uh, the baby uh, Dinobots. I hated that. I hated that with a passion. I'm like, why? What? Why does these exist? There was no explanation. They just appeared. Uh, uh, and Isabella Moner's character, she was like, "Oh, these are cute," and that was about it. Grimlock must have got horny after yeah. China. Yeah, it's like see, it means nothing but horns. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I so did like toy? I did like the uh, the scene where. Uh, where they fix Bumblebee's voice box and then he stands up and he's got Siri's voice. <laughs> it was just like, what? Um, that made me chuckle. But moving on to my, uh, my next favorite, uh, and again, uh, those who know me would not be surprised by this one, uh, would be Generation 1 Victory Death Source. Um, I know it's not up there on a lot of people's favorite toys list, uh, but uh, this toy works for me on on a lot of levels. Um, I owned it uh, well over a decade ago, and uh, and I sold it in my first big uh, collection purge back in two thousand six, and that was like like one of my biggest collection regrets. Uh, which you know, fortunately, uh, thanks to my girlfriend and. 2016 at the last BotCon, that regret was fixed, and I now have a complete G1 Death Source. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I love the toy. Uh, the the colors on it are just gorgeous. You know, the golds, the yellows, oranges, uh, the blues, grays. It, it, it's just an awesome looking figure. Good size, and then that weird looking. Uh, let me see if I can find the. Uh, the other screen. Oh yeah, there's there we go. That chicken looking kaiju alt mode of his. Uh just <laughs> so impressive. Love it. Uh it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous toy all around. 
to me. Uh, plus, it's got the double breastmaster gimmick, which is kind of cool. I mean, you know, who, who doesn't like two boxes that turn into beasts that just randomly plug onto his chest? It's like they really don't serve a function other than, hey, I look better in robot mode. Um, <laughs> but they look pretty cool. Uh, Death Source is, is definitely up there with uh, one of my favorites. Yeah, I really like him. And he's actually on my shelf with my Browning, but along with like, uh, I don't know if some people are going to have these in their Slayer, but like, you know, like Leo Kaiser, you know, and Black Zarok and Metal Hawk and a lot of those toys, just all really, really cool toys, really great toys and Overlord. Um, but, you know, only got so much room to for a top five. I want to get some variety. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I had to continue with my, uh, my top lists, uh, very near Death Source here would be Road Caesar, which I also have. Um, and I know Headmaster Dawn, if he were on here uh, right now, he would be uh, poo-pooing on both of my choices because he thinks they're, they're, they're kind of awful toys. But especially Road Caesar. They're fun. Especially Road Caesar. Uh, you know, the, the yeah. way the Brain Master gimmick works on Road Caesar is Love awesome. It, it is. Look, it is. Dawn doesn't oh, know awful toys. His favorite toy is Supreme Cheetor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why? You can everyone it listening is to not, that record, It is that's not his fact. favorite. Toy. That's his favorite toy. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, the one that I picked up at uh, when when did I pick it up? I think it was the last TF Con that was in uh, in uh, in Chicago. Um, I picked up my Road Caesar there, uh, and he was in very good condition, but the the Breastmaster gimmick on it didn't work all that well because it had seized up a little bit but i picked up some the uh rc car grease that you can get I, 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 it's it's like a silicone grease yeah like i figured a silicone oh. spray would work for that yeah uh but i got the silicone grease it uh it is not harmful to plastics because it's meant for like rc cars and and things of that nature and i got a uh a few q-tips and i just went to town you know rubbing it into the joints and and I work, you're rubbing it in yeah I was, I was rubbing it liberally into the joints and 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 as as i did that i'd, I'd slowly work the brain master gimmick now oh man it's it's like butter they're 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 like new and uh uh it's 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 just a good little toy uh it's odd looking and i just love him uh but he did not make my top five lifts but but Seeing as how I have two victory toys, well, technically four, uh, might as well go ahead and get a uh, Overlord or uh, and a couple others. So why not? <laughs> uh, I guess Robert, you uh, back to you again. Yeah, um, here's one. Uh, I bet Christian could have predicted this to be on my list because we've talked about it before, if he remembers. But uh, he's like, oh. <laughs> Oh, Final what? Tech Mirage. Guess what's on my I, list? I thought it might ha! be. <laughs> um, I, I thought it might be. This is the alternator slash Vinyl Tech, and this is again Vinyl Tech Hot Rod. But this mold, um, I have this and Mirage and the E Hobby Rigi, the AKA Clear Reece, Mirage. Yeah, Reece, yeah. I love this mold. Um, its transformation is not perfect, but it's slick as hell in car mode. And, and once mode. you get it in robot mode, it looks awesome, you know. And then I still am a big fan of the Alternators line. That's why I was one of the first videos I did on the Brumans uh, videos channel. But, you know, just the, the detailed interior, the doors open, you can pop the hood out or the, the trunk, you know, and you got the engine details in there. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just cool as hell. You know, it's one of those, it's a moment in time they, uh, of what, what Alternators represents. I had to have something from it. And so I got my favorite toy from that line. Uh, and yeah, it's this guy. Anybody that doesn't have some version of this mold, even if you don't have any of the rest of the line, I'd recommend picking it up and just fun fact, having it there. Fun fact, Alternator's Mirage is the only alternator I still have. There you go. <laughs> because it's, it's just that Bring awesome. Just that awesome. All right, Christian. Well, since Rob kind of took Might this well. one. I, yeah. I wanted to make sure I was like, shit. I was like, when well, I realized I didn't get no, it, so I, I was like, I need to do it now before Christian does. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, a, that's a good call. So I've got the original Alternators Mirage here, but I also have the Alternators Hot Rod or Rodimus, the San Diego one, and then I have the clear one as well. 
I tried to get out the clearing, but he's really packed up for my move. So, oh well. I noticed you've so, got the I, Repro label set on that one too. I do. I didn't originally want to put any Reaper labels on any of my alternators because I wanted to keep them pristine. But I saw this one. I was like, you know, it really does enhance the look. And I, I like it a lot. So I got the one for Jazz, too, when Wheeljack is next. Yeah. I, I, I like the one for Jazz. It really, really uh, made that mold pop to me. But um, if I had to pick a second alternator, it would be the uh, the Meister uh, slash Jazz mold. Uh, that one oh, was really, like, really good too. Yeah, pr- probably Shockwave out of that one instead, maybe. Mm. Both of them, really? both of them are so pretty. They, I they are pretty. Them. They are pretty, but I, I, Shockwave was just a weird choice for me. I guess I still got the whole run. It was. Uh, it should have been the first line I ever completed. It ended up missing it by a couple months, but uh, I really tried to complete the whole line on that one hard, and and I did. I love them. I'll never get rid of them. I had everything except the yellow <laughs> version of tracks. Like I even had Zoom Zoom. Um, and okay, but I, I haven't completed vinyl tech. Fine. Sorry, I had yeah. <laughs> all the vinyl tech except the yellow tracks, and then anything that didn't have a vinyl tech version, I had the alternators version of it. That's what I was having as complete. But I eventually pared down some to to less repaints. If you switch that for me, I have all of alternators plus yellow tracks and RC and Zoom Zoom. Okay, and guys, so clear you feel, mirage. So it's the, it's the opposite with, side. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. See, I I had uh, back. Before my first huge purge, I had all the alternators, the U.S. released alternators, both loose and sealed. I had them all, including the exclusives. Uh, and then the ones that were Japanese releases or in vinyl tech that, di- w- that we didn't see in the U.S., like uh, the yellow tracks, I had those, uh, those color variations. So you did too. what Christian did. Yeah. Yep. Uh, now, I did not... Uh, I did not continue with uh, the Bonal uh, Tech Asterisk. The only one that I had of those was the uh, was the uh, uh, the Silver Skids, the the Blaster. Blaster. I guess uh, I didn't get any Kiss Plays uh, at all. Um, <laughs> Nobody did. I still want, I still want Kiss Plays Rodimus. Yeah, not I, for the Kiss playing bit, but because yeah, admit if it. If Rob will hold him up again, that toy is awesome. Admit it. Yeah. You you wanted Tastes like you, you wanted the anim- uh, the scantily clad anime. Uh, uh, you yeah. caught me. It should, it should oh. note when I say vinyl tech, I, I mean Kiss players and Asterix as well. Like I, I just looped it as one continuing line because yep. who the hell cared about the fiction? It didn't. It was better when it didn't have fiction. When they started giving fiction to those toys, it went it went south quick. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. Well, especially whenever they started having uh, Kiss me for a power up. Yeah. <laughs> Although we did get auto troopers out of that, so <laughs> <laughs> that's that's permanent fandom now. That's bled out into other things. Mm-hmm. Auto troopers. Yeah. Uh, speaking of auto troopers and kiss play, Jack. Uh, no, don't remind me. No, no, no. Ugh. Leave that in 2007. <laughs> um, next one, Mr. MP10. Nice choice. Um, when I was, I want to say five or six, I got the original uh, MP04. It was like the 20th anniversary of the Transformers line, so they released the first one. It wasn't the DVD edition. It was... Did you say when you were five or six? Yeah. That's so about five out. years ago then. <laughs> oh, my God. I am so old. I was like yeah, but, out of college when that crap was coming out. Yeah, it was I was like an adult. <laughs> I was adult, out of school, and with a working job. Yeah. yeah, Jack gets to make me feel old. He's the only one on the show who does. Yeah, Maybe uh, Sergio. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I got MP01 when I was, and it was like 2004. Um, and when I moved down to Arizona, um, I'm not sure if I lost it somewhere down there or if I had somebody stole it from me. But uh, I ended up obviously losing it. So uh, I was really hoping to find a good MP Optimus again. Then once 2010 came around, that's when they announced MP10. Or the next masterpiece after Rodimus, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna hold up for Hasbro version, and they did, and still missed it. Because uh, the day I went to go pick up MP Optimus, it was, I think they just had the first run come into Toys R Us, and I think at that time they were going for like 60 or 70. Um, they pretty much got the Ollie's treatment, so uh. 
I'm like, I'm really going to get this frame. So the day I went into Toys R Us, I'm like, I asked the one girl, I'm like, where's the MP10 Optimus? Is it? It's like, oh, yeah, they're going to be in here tomorrow. I'm like, uh, I'm it. not. <laughs> yeah. Because the day I went into Toys R Us, we were actually headed back to Wisconsin because I was in Minnesota for the weekend. I'm like, yeah, I get to miss out on MP10. So I got, I, I had to settle with MP Thundercracker. Um, so I finally got this guy at TFCon in Chicago. The first year it came to Chicago. Um, Might have overpaid for it, but it was worth it. So That toy was scalped super hard, the U.S. release, when it first came out. It was hard to get at a, at a retail for, for a bit. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Now it's I been released so that. many times. <laughs> it's, yeah, and I, mean, I think it's getting ready so to be released about again. To get the V3. Yeah. Yeah, or since... probably. The MP10 original run in 2012, there's been like the two on BBTS. Obviously, the many moon repaints for freaking, I think, 10. It's just. I keep I think missing the out on the uh, KFC upgrade hands for mine. I've got the Takara one, and I, I want the uh, KFC upgrade hands because I hate the hands on, on the official one because that little finger keeps popping off typewriter fingers yeah that. my finger's fine the only problem i have with mp10 is the gun i just hate how it's just so freaking floppy and springy and it's just like oh stay in one yeah. place jack hates it when his gun is floppy <laughs> i think the <laughs> amount i flick in his big is made it so i can't enjoy him as much yeah, but uh, I, I'm I'm a huge way, fan of way too much. I'm a huge fan of those KFC upgrade hands because I just like to uh, to have the the dynamic. You know, you can have dynamic po more dynamic poses with those. Hands, Everything you can know. flip the bird. Yeah, the entire shelf can flip the bird. Not just flipping the bird. I mean, you can have them like like cool po uh, pointing stances. No. Flipping uh, the bird. No. Uh, you can have them doing doing the circle game. You know, uh, you can. <laughs> yeah, we do look. You know, it's uh, funny enough, I had the KFC Stratotanker uh, photos up for the longest time, and I think only one person noticed that one of the pictures he was doing the uh, doing the circle game. Okay, i got to find this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's just I did not nonchalant, nonchalantly there. <laughs> Somebody sent me a private message and said, Damn it, Weird Wolf, you got me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've, I've been waiting for those those upgrade hands for mine uh, and and uh, I missed out on it but hopefully one day I'll find the, the Takara set but my next one uh, is another generation one toy and uh, may surprise some people uh, it's generation one six shot uh, nice. six shot actually has uh, again not one of the greatest toys of all time but it was the first to really offer a huge challenge as as a as a kid. Uh, I was one of those kids that whenever I opened it up, uh, and many of us G1 fans may remember that the instruction booklet for Six Shot was actually sealed with a sticker. Uh, you, uh, yeah. Whenever you opened up the uh, a brand new Six Shot, the instruction booklets were inside the the plastic instruction. But they had a little black uh, black sticker on there, and the challenge was for you to try to figure out how to transform him into all six modes without cracking open the instructions. I couldn't do it, <laughs> you know. I mean, I was I was a young kid, you know. You know I might have been twelve, I guess, and it was it was a little bit hard for me. Um, but once I opened up the instructions and figured it out. Uh, I really love that toy. I mean, yes, some of the modes are a stretch, uh, but the spaceship See, mode. I don't understand how you couldn't do it because with six shot, you just put it into any form you want and say, boom, that's a mode. Yeah. Do it again, boom, that's a mode. You always win. It's yeah. design your own toy. Pretty much. But, you know, I mean, oh uh, I, I really dig the, uh, the spaceship slash fighter jet mode. Uh, the winged wolf mode was, uh, was another favorite. I liked the uh, the uh, the tank. It's just a really really cool toy. And whenever I think back, no, no shout out for the laser pistol mode. Yeah, the submarine mode was submarine. really. <laughs> yeah, the laser pistol mode. Um, I think was probably the least used mode. 
uh, that I ever used out of all those toys that I had as a kid, simply because I just wasn't into role play. It's like my G1 Shockwave that I had back as a kid very seldomly got in, got put into gun mode, uh, simply for the reason that I didn't like sta- standing there with a big gun, you know. Um, you know, I kind of like the the idea that nowadays that they take some uh, some toys and include like a smaller version of it. You know, like the Masterpiece uh, uh, Shockwave comes with a, a, a very tiny he, version of him. So he can play with himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Yeah, uh, Duran, I did find that picture. You sneaky, sneaky SOB. <laughs> so, yeah, G1 uh, Six Shot, uh, simply because he was, he was one of those toys that whenever I think back uh, to some of the most fun toys that I've ever owned... Uh, he he really is up there on in, in the top of my list because I remember the fun that I had that Christmas that I got him. Uh, I, I sat for several hours just trying to make him go into all all six modes, and you know I'd get almost there but not quite. You know I'd forget to flip this up or oh that was so, me with the Titans yeah. Return six so, shot. So uh, Rob, your next one. All right, so Masterpiece is probably my favorite line um, as a toy line as a whole. I mean, I don't know, G1's up there, you know what I mean? Like, but I, I, the collection as a whole, I really like the Masterpiece collection. Like, I'll rebuy, keep rebuying the same character for minor upgrades. You know, like, I'll, I'll do it there. I won't do it anywhere else, but I'll do it there. Um, so I had to have a Masterpiece toy on there. And so, you know, I thought about, how oh, should I throw MP10 on there? You know, and I was like, no, because it's not what I want yet. And so I went with... Hmm. old Megatron MP36. And the reason why is they, they started a few a few uh, toys before Megatron, but, you know, looking like they popped off the screen, I am all about that. You know, and MP10 doesn't do that. So if they do the V3 Optimus, you know, maybe that'll become my new favorite Masterpiece toy. But until then, it's a Megatron. He pops off the screen um, so much better than MP05. Uh the transformation is intricate, but I don't think it's hard. I, I think it's, it's intuitive, and that's to me is the difference. Like, I think for the most part, you can figure out where things flow. There's a little bit with the shoulder. Sometimes it gets a little annoying. Um, you know, and unfortunately, it's got a couple of paint flags, but, you know, that happens, you know, if you want to transform a toy. Um, but I just I just love the look of this guy and knowing that they got a Megatron toy in this scale that looks this damn good, that does transform. Uh, back's a little messy, <laughs> but you know, again, I don't display from the back, but, um, so yeah, it's just, I like to see who does. <laughs> yeah. but it's just, I don't know. It's just too kick ass. And the fact that I've also felt this was like a big, we're sorry about MPO five from Takara. You know, the rumors been out how that toy was developed in like five days or something and it showed. Um, but yeah, just to get this guy and him just to look so damn good to be so on point. Um, you know, this is everything the masterpiece line should be. And it is. So, yeah. I agree. I want that thing so bad. Mine's still sitting it's, on the shelf. It's, it exp- get it's expensive, but, you know, I think it was one of those toys that, you know, it's Megatron. It's pretty much the best version of Megatron we'll probably get for a very, very long time, maybe ever. Yep. Uh, and I'm like, that character, I'm willing to pay the price that, that they were asking for. Uh, originally, now let's say if uh, if Masterpiece Inferno had been two hundred and twenty something dollars, however much it was, I would have been hell no, absolutely not. Um, you know, Beast Wars Megatron. Now that it's been announced and we've seen it, that's a oh. that's a definite maybe uh, for me for, uh, for a high price tag. Um, but G One Megatron, uh, maybe another MP ten version of MP ten Optimus Prime. Uh, I could go up there with in the price. Um, but yeah, the, uh, to me, that was like the biggest negative for that toy was, uh, uh, excuse me, the, the price. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think at this point, like they're getting to Soul of Chogokin level engineering and detail and paintwork. And, you know, Soul of Chogokin isn't cheap either. So um, to me, I think the price is in line with the market for a collector's item. But, you know, I, I can understand why there's that sticker shock or whatever. But, again, it's it's the Masterpiece Collection. 
it's it's the first thing that comes out of my monthly toy budget. I think uh, my masterpiece toys. I think um, Michael Swift actually put it best in the uh, uh, in the uh, public group that you know all these people that are complaining about the prices of uh, the increasing prices of masterpieces. Uh, we've actually had it ra rather lucky as Transformer fans up until this point uh, because our highest end collectible versions of our characters have actually been reasonably affordable. Um, you know, it uh, only up until Sunstreaker and, uh, and Megatron and those, uh, has the price really started to rise on them. Uh, but the intricacies, intricacies are a little bit more on those toys The uh, the paint detail, the attention to detail, um, the more cartoon accuracy, uh, you know, they, they are becoming even more of a premium toy than even before. And they demand a higher price because, you know, more parts, more point, uh, parts count. Um, you know, and, uh, and of course with Sunstreaker, I'm sure the license fee had a lot to do with that too. Mm -hmm. Christian, your next one. All right. Well, remember that time we were all just bashing on the last night? Hmm. Oh, I think I know where this is going on. My next favorite is this guy. Shadow Spark, Optimus Prime, the leader I class. Forget. All right, so a lot of people like to hate on this mold. Sergio likes to tease me about it all the time that I like it so much. But I like Why? it. Why? Why? I don't know. <laughs> it looks cool. It's It's got dynamic options for posing. He's got this cool axe, which I gave him. <laughs> so what you're saying, it's kick axe, huh? Yeah. Mm hmm so right now I'm trying to mold complete this mold, which everyone thinks is crazy, and that's okay. But this version's got really good paint work, and it, the the way that it it's got a fade on the flames, and I probably can't convey it through this, but the the nickel copper kind of plating that they did is is really great. But most important about this one is that my sister got him for me when she was in China last year. Nice. Oh. Yeah, so she was traveling around, and I said, hey, if you happen to find a place where you can buy toys, uh, would you have a lookout for this for me? And she she found it for me, and she texted me right then, and then she got it back in her small, little, tiny, itty-bitty suitcase somehow in box, <laughs> and uh, it was very cool of her to do that for me. So he's one of my favorites that way. Nice. Jacko. <clears throat> Me, Grimlock, don't want to be in this list. <laughs> uh, MP08 Grimlock. Uh, this one I was waiting for a long time. Uh, one of the selling points was that you can pass me my favorite gimmick of a toy ever. Is that you can dress them up like a waiter and serve them, like have them walk around with a little, little tray filled with glasses. And he's got a little bow tie and dino bot mode. I'm like, this is my favorite thing ever. Um, so yeah. dorky that it's awesome. I know. That was pretty much the main selling point why I wanted this. Plus, obviously, it's Grimlock. And uh, another feature that I really liked in this is that they give you the option in both Dino and Robot modes is that you can flip the color of the eyes, which is really nice. You can have either the red or the blue. Um, then he also came with this pretty bitchin' flame sword accessory. I'm like, yeah, that's that kind of sold it for me. So yeah, the, I mean, it's Grimlock, obviously. So that's pretty much the main reasons. You know, I I, I love the uh, the masterpiece Grimlock mold. That is until I got Fans Toys Grinder. That thing, I I didn't think that that it would be better than Masterpiece Grimlock. I figured it'd be maybe as good, uh, and everything. But once I opened that thing up and transformed it. It is leaps and bounds better, in my opinion. Uh, Do what I did. Everything I that was grinder. everything that was wrong with Grimlock, they fixed in Grinder, pretty much. See, I bought Grinder for my masterpiece shelf, and then I bought the King Grimlock version for my masterpiece extra shelf. So that way, I still have the mold because it is a great mold. Um, it's the way I still have that, Phenomenal but toy. for my G1 masterpiece shelf, I got I have Grinder. And that way, I get both. And I really like the uh, King Grimlock colors as well. And uh, one thing that always stood out to me with that mold was, I think that was the first time we saw them, like, you know, take a tail and fold it up into a leg. 
You know, I thought that was really yeah. clever engineering. And since then, it's a staple of a Dinobot toy now. It doesn't matter if it's Grimlock or somebody else. Mm -hmm. That that bit of engineering is so awesome and works so well. They do it all the time. Kind of like um, the first time you play with Masterpiece Inferno and that the back ladder goes into his back. Yeah. And you're just like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. You know, it was one of those awesome moments. So that's why I always thought the, the Grimlock toy was had one of those moments. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever I, I got Grinder, it was like, you know, the, the weight of the toy, the size of it. Uh, now my actual official MP Grimlock is relegated to dino mode in his, like, duh-looking, uh, you know, goofy-looking uh, <laughs> pose in dinosaur mode with my movie, uh, uh, my uh, animated movie characters. And then Grinder is up there looking all badass with the rest of the Dinobots. You know, it's just like... Come at me, bro. Yeah, come at me, bro. And the you face see, you made for that just made me. Oh, that was hor. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's essentially the way he is. I mean, he's literally sitting there and he's got got his claw and he's kind of going, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I stood him on the on the desk here, side by side in robot mode, and I'm like, one looks like small and weak, and the other one looks, you know, big and and beefy uh it's just hands down better you just have to experience it uh but my next favorite is actually also a masterpiece uh another surprise by a lot of people would be that my next favorite is mp39 sunstreaker uh it is a phenomenal toy uh and actually prompted me to go ahead and sell my bad cube uh sun surge i had uh. i had told myself you know i'd, I'd even set, stated here on the podcast you know i had no intention to sell my sun surge i wanted to get sun streaker because he's he's another one of my favorite characters he would probably be probably be in my top 10 of characters uh throughout all of transformers even though in generation one he only a, a really had some characterization in in just a handful of episodes but then again weird wolf didn't even speak in the g1 cartoon so uh here in the in the u.s so but i just loved the way he looked that you know that striking yellow and he was a lambo uh with a big old supercharged engine on the back who who couldn't like that um i, I feel that everything that megatron did right sunstreaker continued that and it just shows that when Takara sits down and wants to do some damn engineering, here's what they do, and they are just going to knock it out of the park. And absolutely, like, like the masterpiece releases, in my opinion, just keep getting more and more amazing. And that's why this long drought of no new G1 mold is really killing me because they are just are they, are just, are they just taking their time trying to uh, trying to make a uh, a really good version of a certain character, or are they done? No, I think I think they're busy. Hope. I think they're busy with NPMs at the moment. I don't think the line's dead or anything. I just I think they've been drawn off to brand unity and dealing with that, and then at some point they'll circle back to it. That's my guess. I mean, of course, none of us know unless you work there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think the line's dead. I do think it's on. I think the big round of repaints we just got announced, I think, is filler. It's like, hey, we're, we're still here. Yeah. Yep. Like we're stuff still coming out, but you know they need they need to repaint Megatron. They need to repaint Shockwave. You know they need to get more money out of that, and they're doing it. That's fine. They need to repaint Sunstreaker. Those guys didn't have repaints. It's yeah. fine. And they can still you do know, a red that. version of Sunstreaker, and yep, you know I mean, they can still do so. They can still do Shockwave and, and and Black Ironhide, and you know and they can do Black uh, Megatron um, and Deep the, Cover. Yeah, like so. There's a lot of repaints to do. I think they're just biding time until they can get back to. Trying out some G1 molds. At least that's what I hope. My deep my biggest cover. <laughs> deep cover. Uh, my biggest Maybe complaint with um, uh, with Sunstreaker is the mirrors for the car mode. Uh, oh, they tend okay. to like to pop off uh, coming whenever you're uh, transforming it back to car mode. Um, that's the only issue I really had with that toy. Um, you Better do have to, yeah, you do have to be careful with the chrome uh, backpack though. 
uh, I can see that as being a really scary part too, um, and everything. So Rob, I wish they had given a gray version of the backpack and the spoiler stuff like they did for Inferno, where mm-hmm. you get that super cartoon chest. Yeah, I wish it had an alternate piece for that because I would have been all about that. But ultimately, that's minor. To me. Yeah, you guys in for Corden? Nah, I'm like, no. I totally am. I, 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 I gave up I, on the I, diaclone colors a long time ago. I, I like them, but I just I can't keep buying a bunch of repaints. It has to be a unique character that I know to really buy a repaint anymore just because of space issues. Well, I love Clampdown, so I'm excited for him to get a partner. Absolutely. So, Rob. I think back to me again. All right. And this should be the last, last last ones, yeah. My last figure is a third-party figure. Um, kind of left field. I wonder if any of you guys have even owned this. But Glacial Lord. Oh. Nice. Ooh. I had it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, that, I'm that dude well, on Facebook that's always, I had him. <laughs> I absolutely love the fuck out of this figure. I love everything Fan Projects did. It kills me in my soul that they didn't continue this line. It's, you know. It's everything you loved about G one. They said I it didn't the... didn't sell that well, but I thought it was. Like... That's because they screwed up the release. They tried to do artificial scarcity with the first two releases coming out at a at a uh, convention. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't a box kind of guy just showed up with a few of them. Not a guy, but you know what I mean. Yeah. No. Um, but, yeah. But it's you know, and I think it just kind of bit themselves in the butt. But everything about this is cool. The thing is, I've never talked to anybody that hates this toy. Um, I loved it. It's it, it's it's like G one, but with more articulation. So many play patterns with, you know, they can be, uh, you know, you can put the guy riding it. He can be the little headmaster. Um, their individual modes. I even have this that I got from Sid. The sticker, sticker mode. Mm. Yeah, and if you, I, I bet I Sid still has some. If anybody's interested, I haven't applied the stickers yet. That's for a rainy day project, but I'm going to apply the stickers um, at some point. But I just. I loved everything about this modern nostalgia throwback, and and it's a completely unique character. You know, it's it's not just it some, fits you know, and it fits on a G one shelf and doesn't look totally, out of place. Totally, yeah. it's totally great. So I would have loved to see what else they would have come up with, and I would have bought everything. Whoever designed that, everything that guy turns out, yeah, I, I would have bought. So. The only reason I sold that is because uh, you hate yourself. Yeah, I do hate myself uh, for it, but um, the girlfriend that I was living with at the time, uh, whenever we separated and I needed money to get an apartment, uh, I sold that, you know, and I I got about 200 out of him, you know, which at the time was good money. Um, And and also have to note with that release, even the boxing, the boxes are cool and the instructions and the sticker sheets that came in it. And then uh, they had the... I can't remember the individual's name, but this dude, you know, he came in the Korean packaging. Yeah. You know, uh, yep. um, he's the one that, story about he's the one that, sea. yeah, lost. Yeah. They sea. made up the story yeah. that had pictures to go with it. You know, it was everything about that was just so fun. So yeah, it's, I still hope I can get a set of those. It's on my list. Yep. Absolutely. Speaking of lists, Christian next on yours. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> This is probably the weirdest one that's going to be on my list, and that's okay, but Bakon Alpha Trizer. The Thundertron yeah. mold. Yeah, except mine now Absolutely has two love the correct Thundertron. legs because I bought it twice because I love this figure so much. I like that it... I like the colors first. And it's like a Alpha Target Master. <laughs> well, I gave him Vector Oracle because Vector Oracle needed a home. So, there you go. Uh, let's see. What do I like about him? I like that he's an homage to an old Bakon toy that never got made. I like that he's a popular character from my childhood that got upgraded because he was so awesome. And I like that he's in charge of everyone, but when the the stakes come up, he gets in the battle too and fights everyone off. So I just kind of like the character, and I like having the toy of that character. I don't know, whatever I get upgrades or new swords or stuff, I'm always like, wow, can I, can I continue to upgrade Alpha Trizer? I don't know. I just like him. He's a pretty purple. He is pretty purple. He's pretty. He's a pretty so purple. Pretty. There you go. There's there's my weird inclusion for the list. <laughs> All right. Speaking of weird inclusions, Jack. <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming up. <laughs> um, I'm trying to fix his head because his own little battle mask fell off. But I got this from Duran. Absolutely love the way this thing looked. Um, 
wasn't huge on getting the MP uh, movie line, but after this, I'm like, I'm going to start try to get him. Uh, this is Bumblebee. And like I said, his head is looking weird because his little battle mask fell off. But uh, <laughs> I sold I sold it to you and turned around and got it again because, damn, you know that, that was only so after fun. it was only after Toys R Us announced that they were closing. I'm like, okay, he's going to be one of the last Toys R Us exclusives. So yeah, I picked him up again, and he's he's not a bad toy. He's not a bad toy. He's like super poseable. Absolutely love posability and figures like this. The dude could just oh, transformation's it, fun. Easily the uh, best mo- uh, master, or easily the best movie Bumblebee we'll ever get. Yeah, but is he the right color? I've never been able to figure. To it me, out. he is. I Honestly, think he's. Yes, he's I think good. he's pretty spot he's not on. Like the orangish yellow, because it's like he look like the dark of the moon, and he's kind of little leaning a little more towards like a really really bright orange. This is like yellow. Yes. To me, the Human Alliance is the right color. So Yeah, I just stuck with Human Alliance. Like, I had to make a decision on if I wanted to buy movie masterpieces or not. And masterpieces is my favorite line, as I've said, but I just I just drew the line at the movie stuff. I just I couldn't do it. And I was like, I got Revenge of the Fallen Prime. I have Human Alliance uh, Bumblebee, which is a great toy as well. And I was like, that'll do, Pig. That'll do. Yeah, the MP Optimus, the movie Optimus, looks okay. Um, haven't even seen it in stores yet. I heard that it doesn't peg together worth a shit, but I wouldn't know it in my That depends on how you transform it because um, I think it was like MGO. I remember watching his video. He had the uh, windshields popping up, and now he tried all these mods to try to make it a little better, and it still wouldn't um, peg together. Then all of a sudden, you trade this technique with like something about the driver, like the doors like in the windows and you have to like hold it while pushing it down i'm like yeah it actually looks good after you you know try this technique that might not even work so i'm like i'll just settle with the asia premium series as my movie masterpiece optimus so are you saying you have aps01u the ultimate edition yeah you should see the box damn damn i still want one of those guys if that's what you have Oh my. oh my gosh, pull your pants up, dude. Shit, we don't want to see your ass. Dear audio listeners only. Nude. Yeah. People that are audio listeners only, be grateful. Yes. Ooh, yep, that's the one. Bada boom. I'm still trying to get one. I know. Yeah. I want that one and I want the dark night watch jet wing one. And you can have Jack for oh, only forty nine ninety five. <laughs> I'd pay in a heartbeat, Jack. My so, headset's Jack, you want... not working. Hang on. Uh, oh. He, so in other, we can word, say we want in other words, he said yes. He'll take that. All right. Sounds good. Uh, the $10 is in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe well, you should just move on to yours. Yeah, I guess we'll move on to mine. Uh, my last one is another one from Out of Left Field. Um, and it's not a masterpiece. It's not a G1. It's from R.I.D. It is R.I.D. Rail Racer. uh, Team Bullet Train. Uh, It was the first true combiner, vehicle combiner that we got uh, along with uh, um, Build King, or or, I'm sorry, Landfill, um, in the Robots in Disguise slash Car Robots line. And it was... Kind of like Road Caesar in that it's only three bots that form one large bot. Uh, essentially, Midnight Express, pretty much, uh, or is it? No, it's just ra- it's Rapid Run, the, uh, the center bot. Uh, forms like a very small portion of the torso and then a backpack. And then the other two bots make up the the chest and arms and the head and then the uh, and then the legs. Um uh, he he's weirdly proportioned, but looks so awesome. Um, the trains were uh, were really cool. Um, I'm sure a lot of female fans like them for whatever reason. I, I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> Gee, you know, spe- I wonder. Especially Kitty Rose from TFW 2005. Uh, if any Wait, of is you this guys, an actual thing. Yes, it happened. Oh, jeez. It happened. 
Yeah, uh, somebody actually got banned on. I brought the quality of this show down. <laughs> <laughs> no, years ago on TFW 2005, there was a uh, a TFW user named Kitty uh, Kitty Rose, uh, and somebody posted a thread something along the lines of, uh, "What's the weirdest thing you've ever done with your Transformers?" Oh, no. And uh, Kitty Rose was a female fan. Is it wrong to be dead naming Transformers? I just found it. Yeah. Yeah, and since we know we know where the story is going, do we really need to go into? No, it? I, I'm just no, I'm just no, going to can leave it there. Yeah, yeah, that's. Oh yeah, Rail Racer is a very cool toy. Yeah, real, real, real. I cool wish we'd toy. gotten those cool repaints that they wanted to do for um, Botcon or OTFCC or Universe or wherever those were going to come out. Oh, is it the the uh, Raiden colors or something? No, it was like Decepticon graffitied over colors. Oh. Hmm. I hadn't seen I don't those that yet. One. Mm. But I, wasn't it because the molds were gone or missing or something? That's why they couldn't do it? I think that was part of it. I think part of it was that uh, 3H was out the door, and part of it was that those molds don't really conform to a size class in America. They didn't then. A lot of different factors. Yeah. I mean, the, well, the size happening. class that they that they were sold in doesn't exist anymore, the mega uh, size class. I don't know what they would be today. They They're kind of deluxe, but at the same time, they... They're almost Voyager too. Uh, yeah, they're they're in a weird. I mean, you'd have to give them a unique price point. So you'd have to sell them as a gift set. You'd have to. Yeah. Um. Uh, and they would be crazy expensive today because, if I'm not mistaken, they have like crazy parts count too. Um. But yeah, I loved uh, Rail Racer. It was like one of my favorites. I, I know whenever it came out back in the day. I was just totally enamored by that toy. It's like me too. You know, I wanted the JRX version, but I found out that essentially the only different, yeah, the only difference I guess is like the clear windows. So yes. I, I really didn't really chase after it after I found that out. I, f- I figured maybe colors or something, but um, I'm pretty sure that's the one I have, but I can't remember anymore. But like it's it is a definitely definitely a beautiful toy. Uh, R.I.D. Rail Racer. So, any of you guys have any uh, closing thoughts? Not that I can think of. I'm glad we shortened this to five from seven because I'm already seven minutes over my time I had for today. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, but yeah. I, I'm not even sure if I could come up with seven. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I think it's I think it's cool that we have such eclectic tastes that we all had different figures, except Rob and I both had. Mm-hmm. That's because we were right. Well, it's true. <laughs> But, you know, we had we had representatives from G1 and RID and Masterpiece and Combiner Wars and just all over the place, and I really like that. Absolutely, that was cool. Room for everybody. Room for everybody. We'd love to hear uh, from you fans, uh, the ones that are watching, the ones that are listening. We'd love to hear what your favorites are. You know, list your top fa- uh, top five favorites. It doesn't have to be from any uh, particular era. Um, you know, even though Rob liked to dip outside of official realms. Uh, What's your five, top five official toys? We'd love to hear from you. You can follow us on Twitter at TFYLP. You can uh, get a hold of me most easily on Twitter. Uh, and uh, we'd love to hear from you on there, as well as on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Uh, always active in there. A lot of people uh, post in there and uh, you know ask questions and stuff. Uh, great place. And also... As always, if you love what we do on TFYLP, right up there at the top of the screen, uh, you can see our Patreon at patreon.com slash TFYLP. Uh, you can show us how much you love us by supporting us each and every month and help us to upgrade and uh, uh, keep, the, keep the lights going. Uh, well, I believe that'll do it for this episode of TFYLP. We will see you next time, and good night, everybody. Night. Night, night.